Hello, everybody. Welcome to this fascinating new chapter of Learn With Tuning. This is Jose. I'll be your host for today. And I'm Tanin from Montreal, Canada. And the guest that we have today is Gabriel. It's joining us from Lagos, Nigeria. And before we get started, I'd just like to introduce him. He is an uh, experienced developer over five years of experience. Uh, he is expert in Java, JavaScript, and Node.js. And he has worked uh, for uh, big companies. Okay, but today he will walk out through uh, what's new in Java and how should you prepare for Java interview. Okay, so let's get started. So, hey, Gabriel, uh, first of all, nice to meet you. And it's my pleasure to talk with you today. How is your day doing so far? My day is going great. Uh, I started here with the visit with Jim. Uh, had a good workout. I've had a few meetings, uh, did some work coding. Uh, yeah, it's been amazing. It's amazing. The weather is a bit hot here in Lagos, but we are doing fine. Oh, nice, nice. So it starts getting uh, hot here in Canada. So we start the spring, okay, a few days ago. So there's no snow, at least around here. Uh, and the temperature is going positive, and that's so great. So, uh, quick question How has been your work at Turing? Uh, Turing has been amazing. Uh, prior to Turing, I was working with a company here in Nigeria. It was uh -huh. hybrid, but part remote and part office. Uh, now, with Turing, it's 100% remote. It has made my living condition much better because the work is more flexible. I get to work when I want to work. And I get to work where I want to work. It's very important. Uh, I may want to maybe work in the second cafe when I wake up. I, I want to work from nice. my home. I mean, it has been amazing. And the work we've been nice. doing has been very, very interesting. Uh, for the past few months, we've been improving our betting engine. Yeah, over the over the next few months, we'll be rolling out some new features to change version. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to us having that in production for every user have access. So. Nice, <laughs> really cool, man. All right, Gabriel. So I'm moving toward the top of the day. Uh, yeah. So I have to be honest with you. I don't know anything about Java. Okay, so the last time that I've heard about Java was Java uh, 11. Uh, so what's What's new in Java? So, what's the list, the, the latest version? Yeah, the latest version of Java now is Java 17. So, in, in 2018, the team building Java adopted a new release cycle. So, what happens now is that every six months, Java releases a new version. And every three years, one of those versions is tagged as a long term support version. Java 11 was a last long term support version. Now Java 17 is a new long-term support version. But the past 17, we had about 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh -huh. And each of, each of these new releases uh, brought in some improvements, some new features, some different APIs. Yeah. Great. And so uh, how do you see this change? So uh, how, how it will impact uh, the way that the developers uh, used to use Java before Java 17? Uh, so what would happen is because Java 12, 13, and all that, they were not only four versions. A uh, lot of businesses and enterprises do not adopt those versions, right? Personally, for all the projects I've been working on for the, for the past few years, I've been using Java 11, right? Because that was the launch, last launch of four versions. With Java 17, yeah. the lead now, a lot of businesses will start using Java 17 because it brings in some improvements, Java internals to memory management, database collection, and some new features. There are two new features that I am particularly very excited about. One of them is pattern matching for speech statements. We didn't have that in Java, but now you can have conditional statements in your speech expressions. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, yeah. Then the second one is state classes. Now you can give a class and you can restrict other classes and interfaces that can implement the state class. I'm best about this new feature. Yeah, I'll be starting my new project with Java 17. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, I have heard about Java because, so I'm a JavaScript developer, okay? And JavaScript handle uh, things asynchronously. 
Uh, so you ended, I've heard about Java. Uh, I was interviewing a candidate for JavaScript, but he is, uh, was also good with Java. And he told me Java has uh, asynchronous operation too. Is, is that true? Yeah. So yeah. how can we do uh, yeah, that in Java? Definitely. So uh, Java has uses the concept of threads to to handle uh, uh, parallel programming. So you can have multiple threads running the uh, operations in parallel. So yeah, that's how Java handles. Uh, nice. Uh, All uh, right. Uh, concurrency. Yeah, concurrency. And with that, you can have async programming. Uh, concurrent programming and all that. Okay, so um, if they want to start to learn Java, okay, what should they go? Do you have any documentation, websites to share? Uh, what's the best place for them uh, prepare yeah. themselves for Java interviews? All right, great. So uh, when I started with Java, uh, there was this really good uh, textbook by Deltel. Delta how to program. It's a very comprehensive material for server development. I use that back in the day and there are new versions of it. There are a bunch of popular blogs where you can learn about Java, about specific features of Java. One of them is Belldong, belldong.com. There's also DZone. DZone has a lot of materials covering different aspects of Java. Yeah. All right, great. How do we handle uh, control related issues like uh, deadlock, live lock, uh, race conditions uh, in this new Java version? Okay, so uh, the new Java version, the uh, the 17, didn't do a lot of improvements in concurrency management, right? Because Java yeah. already has like a very robust API for handling concurrency and uh, dealing with concurrency issues. Uh, so the classic ways are like using locks. Java has this synchronized keyword that you can use to ensure that only one thread executes a block of code or a method at the same time. Uh, some other ways are using uh, thread self uh, collections, like using a vector instead of using a linked list. Another way is mm -hmm. using uh, atomic variables like atomic integer, atomic boolean, so to prevent multiple threads from updating a, an atomic variable at the same time. Uh, there are a bunch of ways, but uh, it depends on the specific concurrent issue that you are trying to deal with. Java has different ways, a lot of ways for, for dealing with those issues. Yeah. Got it. Okay, and so, so what I've been seeing is uh, Java developers, even uh, JavaScript developers that work with backend. So backend developers are yeah. learning um, Docker's, Kubernetes, uh, and they are starting to uh, dive deep in this world, like uh, how to deploy. So, so what do you see about this? So do you think that Java developers, all of them, or at least the most of them, should learn uh, this kind of DevOps stuff like Docker, Kubernetes, and then yeah. dive deep in this new world. Yeah. What do you see? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's something that any uh, solid backend developer should, I mean, not know everything about DevOps, but you should definitely have a good idea of how it works. Because understanding how your, your code runs in production would help you make better decisions while building your code, right? You, it will yes. help you to be more, uh, to handle resources more appropriately, right? And uh, yeah, just help you with resource management, better, uh, I think majorly resource management is one of the reasons why I think every backend engineer should have good understanding of how their, how their code is deployed and runs a product. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I particularly, I know uh, this kind of stuff because I had to do that in my local. So I, I've learned uh, how to deploy stuff, how to uh, improve the performance of application in production. Okay. And I think that's a good thing for you to, for you guys learn too. 
right? Okay, Gabriel, let's talk about the future for a while. So when I began, uh, I've seen yep. people saying PHP will die, okay? And then they said, never learn PHP. So it's passed 17 years, and then I see PHP is so strong nowadays, okay? Uh, what do you think that the future look like for Java developers or even for uh, Java development? Okay, so uh, today, Java is number one for enterprise applications. And I don't see that changing in the next few years. I mean, granted, it's hard to predict the future if case we have so like, but, but for enterprise development particularly, uh, Java is still going strong. And I, I see it, I see that trend continuing for the next decade, right? Uh, I, I, would, I would say that in, for some use cases, we may see decreases of Java, right? With the advent of Node.js, Node.js is adoption on the back end is increasing a lot by the day. But for enterprise development, Java is still going to remain the king uh -huh. for the next few years, uh -huh. in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the interview process for a while. Okay, so uh, how the interview process look like? So what? kind of topics questions they ask during a java interview okay. uh, so the classic ones i mean data structures algorithms uh questions on concurrency depending on the kind of flow that uh the interview interviewee is interviewing for uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, data structures, algorithms, a few about Java internals, like the syntax, the sort of syntax and all that, then concurrency. Those are the classic interview questions from my experience. All right. Do also, they ask the also if... yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I don't Go like ahead. that one that I miss is design patterns. So Java is big on design patterns, just like the solid pattern and yeah, the in general is also a very good one for Java interviews. All right. So do they come with question like, what is the difference between Java 11 and Java 17, for example, or not? They they just uh, ask question about, no? No, no. That's not. So because uh, a lot of teams don't move very fast, adopt these new versions. Uh, today, 2022, Java 8 is still the most widely used Java, even though there is Java 11, which is the longest port version, and there's which is the longest port version. A lot of companies still build primarily with Java 8, right? So uh, uh, yes. it's difficult to ask, it's tricky to ask questions about the different versions, right? Because that doesn't really represent the kind of uh, things you would deal with in your work as a developer. So the kind of questions you expect to get at things around design patterns. Personally, I've interviewed a lot of people and uh -huh. my favorite questions are around, around design patterns. All right, and do they ask questions for database as well for a Java developer, uh, like uh, SQL database, no SQL database, uh, yeah. cloud database? Do yeah, they ask questions like this? Definitely, if you interview for a, a backend though, you should expect questions on how to uh, deal with database and database issues. All right, and so what's the best place for the uh, learn Java? I mean, see the documentation and prepare themselves for an interview. Yeah, there are some good textbooks out there. Uh, back when I started, Delta, uh -huh. how, to, how to program was a very popular textbook back in the day. It was a comprehensive Java, Java textbook, right? So you have Delta, you have the official documentation, of course. You have some uh, really good blogs like the Zone, like Geek for Geeks. These are like good Java blogs that you can learn about specific topics in Java. Then there are some very good courses on Udemy and Coursera that you can explore as well. Yeah, but back when I thought right. I used Delta, I used Nice. Is there any course um, how to pass in a Java interview? Did, have you seen that? Uh, no, no, no. So personally, I don't pay so much attention on how to pass in interviews, right? I always believe that if you learn the technology, right, if you learn it right, 
you can always pass the interview. So That's I so hope I, yeah, yeah, I don't focus on learning how to pass interviews. Instead, I learn the technology, I use it, I play with it, and I'm prepared for my interviews. Yes, Gabriel, that was really helpful. And thanks a lot for sharing that. Uh, but we'd come across uh, Java opportunities. How do you see the market for Java developers? Should they invest uh, to learn Java or should they move out Java for PHP, for example? Uh, the opportunity for Java developers is massive. Uh, a lot of companies, so many companies use Java as part of their stack. I mean, Java is still ranked like the, f the first or second most used language across the globe, which means out of companies, uh -huh. both legacy systems and new systems still use Java. So the opportunity is massive, job opportunities, and the pay is because of developers. And I yeah, think that's the most important. Yeah, the pay is good. And another thing is uh, because of out of uh, so my personal perspective, I, I have not set up new developers. Uh, mm -hmm. tend to pick up JavaScript first, right? It means that there are even more opportunities for Java developers to support of systems here in Java. And it's still the number one for enterprise systems. So the opportunities are massive. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, but I know you are experts in JavaScript as well, right? Uh, personal question. Uh, yeah. Which one do you prefer, Java or JavaScript? Hard question. Uh, it, 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 it depends. I am not one to, to like pick one over the other. I, I, I always say that you use the right tool for the, for the right job, right? But it depends yeah. on what I want to work on, yeah? Uh, if I want to work on like a financial system, so in a place where I need uh, the, the the solid guarantee is that a statutory type language gives me, I would prefer to use Java, right? If it's a system that I need a, a bit more flexibility in how I can do this, I would not prefer to use JavaScript. A front-end nice. uh, project, obviously, would be, I would prefer JavaScript. So it depends on what I want to work on. I love both languages. So I pick the IT for the, for, for the right job. Yeah, that's a smart, a smart answer. Uh, good answer for... Uh, uh, recruiter. All right. So, um, and if you guys are looking for Java opportunities or even PHP or JavaScript opportunities, you just need to go and access turing.com slash jobs, search for the technology that you uh, are most comfortable to work with. You'll see a lot of jobs there. Uh, sign up at Turing if you are not uh, signed up yet. Uh, pass through the vetting process. Okay. And then once you pass that, you'll be able to uh, find jobs and work with uh, Gabriel, with me, 100% uh, remote from your country, or you can even uh, move to another country if you want, okay? Uh, if you have any question that we didn't answer today, another question, please give, consider give a thumbs up for this video, comment below what kind of question do you have, and you can always reach us out at support at turing.com, write your ticket there. So they usually re, uh, reply your tickets in the same day. So they move quick there. Uh, subscribe at Turing at YouTube channel if you are not subscribed yet. So uh, with this, we come to the end. I'd like to ask Gabriel to give us a final thoughts about Java. And then we are going to go, we are going to learn and we are going to work together. Yeah, uh, so as we've said uh, so far, Java is a solid technology that's, that's uh, stood the test of time. A lot of companies, banks, uh, financial systems, enterprise applications still use Java for development. So if you are a developer and you want to get there with Java, I encourage you to, I mean, it's totally worth it. You can log on to Turing, as Joseph said, and you, yeah, we have several plenty of opportunities for Java developers out there, they're happy to have you. All right, with this, we come to the end. Thanks, Gabriel, thanks everyone, and I hope to see you all again. Take care.